It's Blamo. I'm Jeremy Kirkland. How are we all doing? We okay? We cold? Jeez, wild week for weather. I'm so tired of this cold. I love to layer, but I can't feel my fingers. You know what I mean? Jeez, I, I talked to a friend of mine. He's in California, and he was like, oh, man, it's 65 and sunny here. I was like, nice. Nice, buddy. On the topic of California, look, as as small as the world gets, we all tend to dress a bit like where we're from. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not just because of the weather. It's an energy thing. Like, New Yorkers dress like New Yorkers. There's the New York vibe. L.A. folks dress like L.A., Paris like Paris. Look, this is one of many examples. Name the city. You got the fit. A brand that stuck out to me that's been a bit of a hybrid of this example, though, is Jaya. First off, yes, that is how you pronounce it, but it's this sort of California cool casual, but all made with extremely luxurious Italian fabrics and construction. It's, but it still looks like the LA guy pushing the grocery cart. I love the brand, and in our new normal, they are the epitome of how folks are tending to dress right now. It's this sort of well, yeah, I'm casual, but this is cashmere, dude. <laughs> okay, okay, enough of my rant. My guest this week is the founder of that brand, Jaya, Davide Barancini. Davide and I talk about the origins of the brand, what he learned at his time working at Cuccinelli, how retail is the essence of service, and more. Dive in to your favorite brand. So, how's biz? You know what, Jeremy? It's uh, <laughs> I don't know where to knock, but um, I, I it's funny. L- last night I was um, you were very kind. First of all, thank you, thank you for having me for having me on this. Um, and and last night, you know, you got I, I got a little bit I got a little bit nervous. I'm like well, with I'm Omicron pod, got, or, yeah, or coming with, on the pod. Oh, with, with coming coming on the pod. And, oh, you're fine. Uh, no, but I was recapping. I'm like, yeah, last last time we see each, we we saw each other was in September, and it was interesting to see how from that time, where also I, I it was e- even hard for me to consider this being like a business, this being a, a brand. Uh, mm-hmm. I was almost I was very cautious, very very um, careful about treating what 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 it was happening uh, and, and and now like little by little that 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 i'm a, i'm happy that now it's uh yeah it's a message that a little bit clearer that that that's also it's been great well i mean i think it kind of is a testament to like what you've done with the brand and as an aside because i know a bunch of people are going to ask me about this can you pronounce your brand and clear yes. the air Yes, I I put so much effort to just make it as hard as possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, some people call it Gia, some people call it Gia. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. I was on the phone with I was on the phone with John Buscemi last week, and and he always makes joke of this friend that we have in common, Uncle Paul, and he's like, "I want to come to store Gia," yeah. and and I'm like, and he started laughing. So when people misspell your brand, it means that you're you've been doing a good job. I was gonna say, yeah, 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 yeah is the name, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, I remember when I first saw it. Uh, I think y- you've really carved a a niche of making California style, I think, a bit a bit more desirable than what it was way back in the day, which was just kind of like this amalgamation of casual and formal slammed together, into which. And I mean, I think this kind of is testament to what you've, you know, where you've been before and the other jobs that you've had prior to that, where it's like the storytelling aspect always right. seems to remain very true to your brand. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I, I think you, you do understand that because you, 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 you are a creative person. And I think that it really, you, you, you there is a fine line between you trying to not be too personal. On what you do, mm-hmm. and that's the reason why I, I found the hardest name to pronounce it, rather than my name, which is not that easy. It's not the, it's not any better, uh, but but uh, it still takes me like those solid ten minutes to order anything on a phone with anybody. So, so it's Davide Baroncini, yes, and the, and the email address like. But so joking aside, 
Yeah, I think in when I first moved here, I was just bullied all the time. I was I was always feeling a little bit overdressed. I was always feeling a little bit uncomfortable. And and then I I just realized what how the other side of is then once you understand, and I think you can apply that to lots of other things. Once you understand the lifestyle, and once you understand what it's really about, and why people mm-hmm. move out west, and and why mm-hmm. the way they work, the way they live their life, what 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 are their priorities? And right. when, once you become one of those people, you are now starting understanding that the, the incredible amount of nuances that that this part of the country um, allows you to experience, and 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 it it, it reflects. On clothing, which is our first, the first thing you do in the morning. Like, okay, where am I going? What, what, what do I want to put on? And and so I think that I, I you are kind. I, I didn't want to take too many, too much credit on on what you said, but 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 it's. Uh, I think it happened uh, pretty organically, you know. And then and then based on that, you're starting to collect fonts of inspiration, which are the people hang out with it. And, right, and right. I like the the movies you started watching and the music you started listening and and you know like you are on a, a bike ride with a kid that, that the week before was riding with like Steve McQueen nephew and you're like okay what what do I I can't go there with like a cashmere coat I I wasn't trying to flex I'm I'm, I'm just saying to say that 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 what you got exposed here in California is is pretty is pretty unique it's it's like you know it's it's I feel that we were in New York recently with my wife and what's beautiful about New York, and I thought I wouldn't ever say that something was beautiful about New York, is that New York is more of their equalizer. Like, you can't be, nobody cares. Nobody mentioned <laughs> their their parents or who their family was or what they did. Yeah. Nobody does that. It's very neutral. And New York is, the, 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 the thermometer of how cool you are is not based on who your family is <laughs> or, or yes. what do you, or where do you go to school? Or it's just, you can be, it's just what it is. It, it's, it's very, it's more block oriented. It's more street oriented. You know, the cool, the cool kid on the block. Who's the, who's the kid. And, and mm-hmm. so when we were there with my wife, I was like, damn, I, I forgot about that. It, it's, it, you have less perception of what you do. You have less perception of what people um, feel about the, the product you deliver, of the, 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 the content, the the, the 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 material that you're working on it they're more focused on like let me smell you let, let, let me let me let me understand what this is about who's that guy right do I, do I, do I now with that guy do i mess with that guy and and instead here because distance are so spread and to have a coffee with you might take me an hour to drive an hour and a half and then another 30 minutes yeah. to put something on and then it's like la isolate you a little bit more in in, in that sense yeah well I mean, I, I want to jump back because before Gaia, you obviously had a pretty incredible career working for a bunch of different companies. So like, because you're, you're born and raised in Italy, correct? Correct. I was born and raised in Sicily. So uh, as south as you get. True Sicilian. Sicilian. Correction True in saying Sicilian. not Italy. Sic- you, know, you know, Jeremy, can I be honest? You are, you are a smart guy. And I want to tell you this. This all happened, of course, the immigrants uh, got this in, in America. Because every time I say I'm Sicilian, people uh, give me like, so you are a Sicilian, you are not anything. It, it's, 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 it's an historical, of course, uh, thing. But, uh-huh. but also what happened in recent, re- more recently, it was around the, I remember it was, I was a kid, it was like late, later 90s. So I made you put a, um, right after the Stretto di Messina, right after when you get the ferry from Sicily to go to, to Reggio Calabria, somebody thought it was a good idea to put a sign saying, Welcome to Italy. And it was a, actually, it was a, a town sign. Like, it was a legit sign. And I remember everybody got so mad in Italy. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like now I get it. Um, but yes, Sicily, uh, Volcano side, Catania. That's where I was born and raised. Um, I got my first real job. Uh, I, I will try to recap. I, I got my first real job in Milan. And, and I was working uh, at Suit Supply. That was my first seed supply. That was my first uh, real job in fashion, and uh, thank God it was that because um, you know suit supply is this Dutch company. Um, yeah, I realized pretty 
pretty soon, like in a in a very organic way, the Dutch people are great uh, uh, building any sort of business. They're very meticulous. They're very structure driven, um, but also they're fast. The system yeah. is way less. Meritocracy is based on really like okay, how hard you work, what the result. It's almost like uh, poor stats versus like. Oh, I'm gonna pay you like this much only because you have the name and you do this and you have the somebody that this somebody else they met somebody yeah. else. Um, so I went pretty. The company was just uh, building their 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 uh, their name in uh, in the lo- in the lower part, lower side of Europe, in UK and and the American market was yet um, born. And and I started the store in Milan. I, I started the opening of the store in Milan, and Paul bit a lot of a uh, lot of clothes. Spent a lot of time downstairs. My English, as you can imagine, now if it's now it's this bad that I'm married and, with an American woman and and I lived in this country for almost ten years. You can imagine how bad it was back then. And uh, yeah, I started working with them, and with them I I I, I went a little bit around. Was very young, um, north of Europe, almost uh, like Holland, uh, uh, Belgium, uh, Germany, and and UK. Um, and then I moved, I permanently moved to Amsterdam and they sent me to China where their production, um, this little, this actually, it's not a little bit, this city calls Wenzhou, which is oh, yeah. for, for, for uh, any sort of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, industry production. And then they sent me to America in 20, it was 20 winter, 2012, um, and at the beginning of 2013, I met the, 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 the president of Brunello Cucinelli in New York. Um, Massimo? Correct. Massimo Caronna. Massimo, was, bi- he's a big fan. He's listening to this. Fantastic guy. Um, oh, yeah. I, 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 learned, uh, I learned a lot from Massimo. He was my, my professional, one of my professional uh, older brothers. And, uh, and actually, I believe, Jeremy, we met um, when I was a Brunello. Somehow, like I remember, uh, we had that the meeting. Yes, yeah, because I, I mean, the Brunello folks to this day are still near and dear to my heart. Where I mean, obviously, you know, it's been amazing to see Carolina kind of grow mm-hmm. more and more. But like, absolutely, they like Georgie and then Massimo. I met, geez, I don't know, t- uh, two thousand ten. I mean, th- yes. they've they they've been such a. a a big supporter, but also like, you know, really encouraging. I mean, when I first started the pod, Massimo emailed me and he was like, this is great. You have to keep doing this. Like, please keep doing it. And it was like, you know, it felt really nice. He's kind of a busy guy, you know, so. But he, <laughs> He's kind of a busy guy. You're right. <laughs> but, you know, he has, he has that, he has, the, well, Massimo got that I never experienced in any other, uh, um, in any other professional profile. Like, he could be a coach, like a sport. Like, yes. He has that. I remember meeting with Massimo we were walking in the room and he just prep you like he knows how to do that. And he started so he really gives he's a he's a person that has that that he, he, I don't know what, but I remember I couldn't work time like <laughs> I could have worked 24 hours a day with Massimo on my on my like he was really he, he was a great uh, I had a great great I learned a lot. I, I learned a lot from Massimo. I'm very thankful. Yeah, he understands retail, I think, better than so many other people. And specifically the power of retail still to this day. Because I know that, you know, as business has evolved, a lot of people have been like, well, yeah, it's more about online or it's more about Instagram or it's more about this. And Massimo is still like, nope, you got you to gotta touch it. You got to feel it. You got to story tell with it. You got to merchandise. He would he would harass Bruce Bask saying, okay, we got to build a big action for this month. A, a bird of, and Bruce was like, Massimo, people are not coming. No, 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 no. We are going to build a full, like, visual presentation. Let me connect yep. you with David. We're going to figure out the merchandise. No worries about the product. We're going to ship it. There. But, but you're right. And, and what's funny, what's interesting is that you expect from somebody at his age that, like, he is incredibly, um, he always feels that he's, he has to look for something else. I remember he was mm-hmm. 2013, 2014, and the, the, and and it was becoming a thing of those stores that will have the customer service of you know the cool guy. You would walk in yeah. and the guy would not even dress you. And and I remember one day he called this meeting and he, he collected his guys and he's like, I went to the store and and 
I don't remember if it was like Carson Street. You remember the old Carson Street with, with the guy that now managed uh, Boglioli. He had the cowboy hat. They had Barena. They had like Antonio, Antonio uh, first Tito's collection. Massimo. Yeah, yeah. He was like, the guy barely say hi to me. And these other kids were sitting outside smoking a joint. Like, I'm like, what's going on? Like, wh what we do? Wh how we do? Like, wh what do you think about it? And I think... Uh, and I think that that is a that is a form of talent. Um, in Georgiana, yeah. I met them. Uh, um, Carolina was uh, Carolina was and Alessio were kind enough to um, invite us at the event that was uh, here in LA a couple of weeks ago. Um, and uh, I was so happy to see Georgie, and I was so happy to see them. Uh, and and uh, they have a special place in my in my heart. Um, um, Brunello was. Uh, uh, Absolutely. It, I would probably not, uh, I would probably not be here. Not, not, I'm not even in the map, Jeremy. So I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, it's not that today I am, uh, who knows who, but, but I would probably not be able to, 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 to have my own business, to humbly, um, to humbly try to, 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 to deliver my message, you know, to, to the market and thank to the industry. Thank, thanks to them. I'm I'm very conscious of that. I'm very 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 grateful. Well, but but still, I mean those those folks they they're not you know uh, they're not idiots. They're they're going to they're not going to hang around or have people that work with them that aren't good. I mean there's a reason why you're there. Um, you know, and I'm sure that you you got to learn a lot. Like how how long did you end I'm up not. being with Cuccinelli? I worked with Brunello uh, till uh, for four, five years. Okay. Um, and what it was interesting is that Brunello is, uh, you, you, you know, the company very well and how he operates. And I think that you with you other people like Michael Williams, uh, for instance, or, or, or there are, there are a few people in, in, in your side of the, of the fence, uh, that really understand how certain brand operates and how certain company operates. So Brunello Cuscinelli is a. Is of course a, 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 a big company, it's a public company, but it's a company that it really does run like a small company, like a family owned mm -hmm. uh, company. And, 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 and Carolina would be the, and Alessio, they are often here in LA and we go often uh, to eat uh, and to, have, uh, to spend time together. I remember a, a time ago, Pia, my wife, was uh, very impressed because, you know, LA is like, LA is the scene. Everybody in LA <laughs> somehow is like, it's somebody, you know, and, and we were at the, with them at dinner. Somebody asked Carolina, so what do you guys do? And, and, and she's like, no, we made knitwear. I work for my father's company. And it was so, <laughs> and it was so nice. No, but you, you know what, you know what, Jenny was running back home and I'm like, and that is Brunello essence. And, and yes, I'm that's glad true. that I could experience that because that's what I was trying to say when I first met you in 2019. I had so many question marks in the sense that he really, he really, he really, I think that is a, a great, there was a great, it's a great way to approach whatever you, whatever you do. Now I'm not saying yeah, that being you humble. need to, but in, in the, in the, the deep sense of the world, which is not necessarily like, okay, today I'm going to be trying to not be too, I'm trying to be cool. No, it, it, it goes right above that. It, it, if you really feel that and, and, and I think the retail in general, um, it's, it's funny. I, I try to keep a key word of what you just said, but I think that the essence of retail is that the service and, and you really gotta, uh, like you, you gotta have, uh, to serve somebody and to provide you an experience, either is a, a clothing store, either is a, a restaurant, either is whatever you, whatever you do, you really gotta have that in your, in your in your code, in your DNA, you, you gotta be able to be humble and to serve. Like, I think that the essence of, of service and experience. Yeah. I, but the, the other side of that coin, which is also what I think Giaia does really well. And, and you know, and, and Cuccinelli obviously is the inspiration part because es especially in America, right? Like I, you know, worked in like luxury retail in America, but then also I did for a little brief time and, and other, you got to see how it worked in other countries. And like in America, at least with luxury retail, there you have to, you don't ever want to like insult someone or come off like too pompous, but you almost need to come off. There needs to be a level of confidence and inspiration that like 
sure, you might be a big, you might be a CEO out there, like outside, but in here, you, you don't know how to dress. And I'm not going to make you feel bad, but I'm going to inspire you and serve you at the same time. And it's, I think it's an extremely difficult line to walk. It is. Uh, and and, and the best stores do it well. And especially men, it's like you got a trunk show and, and yeah. the guy's pulling off with like this $2 million car. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> and, he's, and he's so happy. And he's with this partner, with his uh, boyfriend, with his uh, girlfriend, with his wife, with, her husband, with his husband. And, and you are like, how do I make you feel that I'm taking care of you, but I'm, that, I'm, that I might be cool, but not too cool, that I might be prepared, but I, you know what I mean? Like, you never know that. And I think I learned that, I think I learned that in those, during those years, you know, like, it, yeah. It's, yeah. it's essential. It's like, I, I remember we were at this trunk show and, and I was with this colleague of mine, I don't know, Dennis, Dennis Mack, and he, he went to this client, we were on a, on a very, uh, in a, 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 one, of, a, one of the Mitchell family store, uh, Richard's. In oh, yeah, yeah. And we're having a trunk show and, and uh, the tailor comes in and, you know, very, in a sense, what I experienced there was that proper, like that, uh, those, those sons of the Kennedy's generation, you know, those guys that were very proper, very, very um, proper was the word. Like, I don't need to be, mm -hmm. I need to feel comfortable, I need to feel confident, I need to feel like proper. And we are tailoring the pants of this guy and, and, and this friend and this colleague, a friend of mine, and his pants were very tailored, very short. And, you know, it was still that 2014, 2015, when it was like, Italian's like, does your jack close? No. Okay, that's good. But your pants are like, pants on the ankle. And, like, and this guy show up and he's like, sir, I think I, we should make it a little bit shorter, this pants. This, this guy, and I could smell the guy. The guy turned and looked at my colleague like, who are you? Why should I have the pants like you? The pants look fine. Like, get out of here. And I, and I, I would never forget. It's like with those events, like on a Saturday on December 20th, you are like yeah. out in Greenwich, Connecticut, it's freezing. And somebody just look at you like, who are you? Get out of here. And, 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 and so like, yeah, I think, I think now I don't, I'm not trying to be that, that guy, but I think that I, 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 there is something that, that I was uh, discussing with, with a friend last week, uh, closing the circle, of course. Or what we're saying to, to trying to make sense, and and I think we are at the same generation, and our generation is the perfect example. It was the mix of we went mm. from what it was like from like the digital world and social media. I think we have the last generation that really was in the middle of that. We saw that change. Yeah. We experienced the change directly, and I feel that for our generation, it was enough uh, to to glorify people. It was enough to think that somebody was great at what they did and you just accepted that. Like, okay, that designer, mm -hmm. that artist, that athlete. And instead, what is really contemporary, new generation, generation that are very close to our generation, uh, th there is immediately that, how do you do something? I want to do it. Yeah. But how do I become you? What do I need to do to be a designer, a artist, a whatever is the case? Um, you have the visual components all the time. You have an incredible amount of content and inputs that bombard you. And so younger, younger generations started thinking, okay, the guy dressed like that, he acts like that. That's what I need to do. I need to buy the car. Right. I need to, that will legitimize myself. That will, that, then I'm a creative director. Then I am a, a designer. Then I am, I can do my brand. I can start it. It's like, it's easy. And I think that's the, the, the other part of the coin. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, <laughs> no, to be it, that guy. No, but, but it's, <laughs> you're right. And I think it's also something that is kind of dangerous at times too. Because I feel like on one hand, if you're an older generation and someone is, wants to learn from you, there's, um, I want to be careful with my words, but like there's basically, there's not, they don't want to put in all of the the length of time it takes to become that. And Correct. I think that that's where, because where it's like, cool, like, how do I get your look as fast as possible? Bro. Versus like, no, 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 you, you, you haven't stopped to ask why. You haven't stopped to ask why I'm going to wear this shirt. It, it's not just that you wear the shirt, but like, Correct. because if like, you know why. Why do I do what I do with this garb? Like, you know, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you know why, you get to understand when it applies and when it doesn't and when to use Correct. it. And I think that's, that's a thing where it feels like that, at least that I hope that the younger generation starts to get that. I think that our generation was, it was the number one thing. It was not, 
it was not about like, I want to wear luxury stuff or I want to care about this, but it was like, why is that sweater better? Why should I wear it this way? Why should I style my clothes this way? Yes. And I think like, then that's something you guys do really well. I mean, we try, we try, but I I think in general, we had less, uh, our generation had 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 less uh, uh, answers, but we had to look for it. Yeah. I don't know if that makes I sense. I mean, you look right? at the whole internet generation. Yeah, right there. I mean, it, it, people like Michael Williams, even myself and other people, the, their whole uh, like business and, and and purpose was was more explaining and exploring yeah. versus, uh, you know, just, just dis- displaying, right? Like it was like, well, yes. no, 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 this is why you should care about this brand. Yes. Uh, you know, I, but I think for me, and this is where like w- sometimes I'll make fun of like, brands like supreme or whatever but it's like for me the the joy is more in the journey than it is in the final like gift of it like now that i know how the sweater was made you know everything about it i appreciate it far more than just having it i'm 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 absolutely agree with you and and i will add that to that that is not necessarily the technical that that interested you it's almost like you met brunello and not to always talk about, but you met any other person that I remember when I first moved here, it's like, you know, as Italian, Italians, and I'm Italian, so I can talk. I, I, when you have an accent, you have to pay less uh, attention to what you say. You can articulate a little <laughs> bit more freedom. I'm joking. <laughs> but, but I remember when, when you are Italian and, you, and I learned this job in Milan, uh, Italians know everything. And overall, they think oh, we are Italian. Like we, we, like we invented this. You know, like every sure. the worst yeah, yeah, client yeah. you can sell some piece of clothes is an Italian. The guy from Milano is an Italian. Is the worst client you can have. It might take like three hours for a guy to to tailor a suit in Milan, a blue, navy suit, pick up like too much. And yeah. so you move here, and 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 had this conversation with with somebody that I respect uh, and 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 admire their job. Um, and again, I, I, like like. <laughs> We have a common friends like like Chris. We say I don't want to throw name because I, I, don't, I I'm not here to do that. But like I was discussing <laughs> with somebody that make clothes that the, yeah. from the European perspective, the American style, the American history of people getting clothes, and I really believe today that I have the experience in this in this in this uh, in this market and in this and in this country. He has way more nuances. He really does. Mm. Like like if you mm-hmm. look at a picture of you know young Kennedy walking in the block with his, with his wife. Like I don't want to mention anything common, but it, it really had more shades of what the what the rest of the world think it is. Um, mm-hmm. And and you really you really understand that only once you 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 experience that and you are here and 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 you're starting to to to, to catch the essence of that. And it it it's like. Once you understand, to link to what we were saying before, who's the person behind something, that's when you really try, like that, I don't need to tell you how, how I did it at that point, but, but I, I trust the fact that this comes from somebody authentic, from somebody that has an history, from somebody that it, it, there, is a, there is a thought behind. And, and I think that is uh, extremely powerful at any level, because the way, you, you, of course, you don't need to be that sophisticated to understand that. If you really understand the essence, the essence of something, the, the famous why somebody does something, I think that's what it makes the difference till these days between a, a great product and a, any other product that is offered out there. I don't know if it makes sense. So. This episode is sponsored by Standard & Strange, your go-to in-person or online store for rugged yet elegant wardrobe staples. Founded in 2012, what was once a tiny store in a back alley in Oakland has evolved into one of the best retailers in America. With incredible brands and more, they have everything you need and are experts in every product they sell. Yes, they can help you fit those jeans or those boots online. Believe the hype. With locations in Oakland, Santa Fe, and now New York City, Standard & Strange has the deepest selection of the real McCoys around. If you want goods that go way beyond just reproductions of the most iconic pieces from the 20th century, the real McCoys is it. Every detail is considered down to the custom thread used in the flight jackets. And the biggest selection is at Standard and Strange. My personal favorite is their loop wheel sweats. Nice and short in the length for the classic look. You got, dude, if you don't have like two or three, you're just missing out. So visit standardandstrange.com forward slash blamo to learn more. And while you're there, check out their new arrivals. Standard and Strange. Own fewer, better things. Standardandstrange.com. 
question. No, no, I agree. And I think, you know, and there's, there's two parts to this because when people glorify McQueen and Paul Newman and all that stuff, um, those guys didn't think as much about clothes as the people who want to look like them do. Correct. And when you think about that, what the options that they had were a, a 16th of the options that we have now to dress. If you were going to go buy clothes, you would go buy pants, right? I'm air quoting that. Yeah, and you'd yeah. go buy your pants and the pants that they had were the best ones and they fit and they looked right. And the only colors that were available were the ones that were available to you, like the best ones, that was it. And so you didn't really have a lot of options. And that's why those guys looked so good. It's but true. now we're, we're in a world of everything can be customized. Yeah. You can dress this way. You can dress yeah. that way. You can dress this. Yeah, but reference so I think for it's, everything. Everything comes with exactly. a code and a reference. Everything. Yeah, and it's, it's so hard to kind of find how you want to look. Yeah. But on that other note, I feel like the best brands now are the ones that are based around people over a product, totally. right? So like you are, you and your wife are Jaya, right? Like, yeah. and so people want to look like you versus a picture, even like, totally. or like, like a, a scene or something like that. Like Cuccinelli totally. is a great example of a brand that has scaled, but still based on a single person. Obviously everyone right. that works at Brunello, it's a massive team <laughs> and they do give credit to those people in there. But the, the story is always, this is Brunello, this is the look. Yeah. And and the, that and, is much easier like, to aspire to. That's Brunello, which means exactly. that, like you mentioned in Paul Newman, you mentioned Steve McQueen, you can apply that to any other iconic figure, I don't know, Enzo Mallorca, Thierry Sabine, we can go over and yeah. over. I think you have to also understand how every person is different, proportion-wise, mm. body-wise. Yes. And, you know, like, you might throw some, I can tell you exactly, yeah, the, the first, it's so funny, Jeremy, like, I made, I made, I styled my product and I shoot at them at my house, right? I have this, this friend of mine, I have a couple of photographers there. I believe one is a common friend, Justin, Justin Chang. Oh yeah. Big, um, big fan of Justin. Incredible guy. And what's funny is that you, I would spend like, you know, I, I, I think I put a, 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 a good amount of care on what I do and attend and I make knitwear. It's kind of clear to everybody that we make sweaters. And then I yeah. started making the bedding suit and I started making the coffee cup, whatever it is that what we're going to produce. The plan is to turn the guy, of course, in a, in a, in a ready to wear. But what's funny is that I will use other products and you always have a large amount of guys. What's the pan? And what's the <laughs> shoes? And what's the, I'm like, and my wife left on me because I get so upset. I'm like, how that is important to you? I'm selling the sweater. Like, you got to take I it as do. a compliment. But they, I want, do, they want the whole look. And it helped me, and it helped me because I'm now developing new product, of course. But, but it, you say something, when you say like, it, it, that pair of pants would not look the same in any guy. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> There's a reason why that guy was that guy. You can't just, you can't just, you can't just uh, reproduce that, you know? And, and, but, but again, as, our, as a kid, and we, as far as we grew up, and and, uh -huh. and and I don't know you that, that much, of course. So paradoxically, as far as we grew up, uh, we had the same feeling growing up looking at those guys. Mm -hmm. and, and you have uh, the time of your life where you're trying to be so analytical. It's like, why that is that way? Like, I have to figure it out why that pair of pants feel that way. Why the shoes look that way. How the guy walk. Where his feet were like, how wide was the, the plan of the... <laughs> So should I order the all then like what's what letter the E, the D, the double D. You go crazy. And then growing up, yeah. what just happened to us, you have a kid now, right? You have a job, like you figure out the dog, the mother, like the, the wife. So life, you have less time. So now what do you do mm -hmm. versus where you have 10 years ago? You say, just you throw a thing on it. And it's like, it's just put it on something. I got to get out of it. It's like, you know, like, or, or like, I don't want to do my, like, I'm going to put a uh, hat on. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So that's when you realize, like, fuck, that's how that guy was. Like, that guy just was the guy. You can't you can reproduce that, you know? Like, so I feel that I'm so happy we're having this conversation. And, and, and because I feel that it's, it's getting harder to, uh, to, to explain that. And, and, yeah. and, you know, and it's not only the look. It's, it's really of how people, I remember Virgil just passed. And, and he was, uh, and he was uh, not that I was... Uh, uh, eating with Virgil every day, but it's like, even somebody like that. I remember mm -hmm. meeting him uh, um, in Milan years, uh, years ago, and, and you could tell that the, the, the way he thought 
what he was in his mind at any given time while you're having a meal, while you were walking around. The guy was processing things and working and like thinking about stuff and walk with his phone. And and so I'm not. I wasn't shocked when he then he had the the the, the, the success that he, that, that he had, the, the impact that he right. had. Right. Because success measure on results, I think, is pretty pretty vulgar. It's pretty poor. But impact is what it really makes a difference. And and you can tell that about any other. Uh, person that somehow had great result i i am a um i like to i like things with an engine and i am a big fan of this brand called unit garage unit garage is this brand based in uh, in riccione you probably know the guy and fabio marcaccini is and you know like in that world is the same you you install something in your bike and you see people go dying because they think that they can ride a bike with like hundred things but it's like marcaccini is this guy he's missing the guy's missing two fingers this guy's been doing four paris da car of course, he, he he knows how to 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 look cool on a bike. Yeah, fuck yeah! Like, sometimes I, I sorry my French, but I'm like, no, you're fine. I, I I'm like, you can't you can't take that away from from anybody. Like 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 you can't. It's just the way it is, and 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 it will never change. Like 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 I think uh, I. I a few weeks ago, the, Michael posted some stories of David. Uh, I'm not. I don't know David. David Coggin so well. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not close to him for some reason. We have been not crossing path yet. But he posted this story of him behind David at the airport carrying this like feel so bad yeah, yeah. hanging at his body. And I was laughing so hard because I'm like, yeah, that's that guy. He's choosing to be that guy, and that comes with yeah. a with 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 a price for it. But 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 yeah, I think I think we can mention so many people that we so many friends we have in common that uh, somehow are special for their reason, you know, like, 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 well, and I think that's the biggest thing where, you know, to tie this back to your brand and what you're doing, I, you know, people want to dress like you <laughs> and people want to dress like David, people, people don't want to dress like a brand anymore. They want to dress the way the person that represents that brand dresses. And I know that actually sounds like the same, but it is different no, with, no, 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 because it's now it's more than the clothes. Right. Like people like David Coggins stuff because I mean, he's not he is not like a clothing brand, but people want to dress the way he does because they they want to associate with him. They want to get into fishing and they want to get, you know, they want to carry their luggage instead of wheeling it, which is still the dumbest thing. Like, <laughs> but but he's so convicted by it. I it's really true. respect it, it and appreciate it. Yeah. And he even gets it. He realizes yeah. that it is more laborious to Both carry your luggage Both than it is to wheel it. Um, but because first, he's so convicted like, with it, <laughs> I, I had my first, I was showing with my sweater for the first year, Jeremy, and I, I'm trying to tell you things before I forget, you see that duffel bag there, you see, now I use it as a storage. It's a big, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to go to my first wholesale market appointment and I'm traveling with my wife, which is the worst decision I could have taken because wife and at a certain point turned like mother, like, why you do that? <laughs> Bring a suitcase, like in a good way, of course. I love my wife. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I had these two military canvas duff bags that are already empty, weight like, based on an accident, empty, full there like a, a brick on your shoulder, like a, a, a cement bag on your shoulder. And I remember showing up on offices with these duffel bags and I was like, oh, I'll just carry on, like bring something a little bit easier. I'm like, no, they got to see it that I'm carrying this stuff on my show from the parking lot up, you know, those large windows, corporate office. I wanted them to look at the window and say, this is, a, this guy is crazy. Like, like, but, but no, but back to your point, it's, it, um, it's, uh, I, th I think that is, of course, consumer clients are now more conscious of that. But I also think the brands now are more conscious of that. Like, how do I build a company? How do I build a brand? How do I? visually stimulates you um in a in a more uh, empathic way i think that at any level unless uh, uh, unless you're not giorgio armani himself uh, uh, uh of course this is a, this is a, but uh, at any level i think the, the 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 way brands are now building um building up is is, is changing it's more on sending the message that you have to collect things in order to, yes. to 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 make those things right, then you can think about being uh, anything else. First has to be right. First has to serve um, the use that you do and the purpose that you do, and 
and and and and I think that I think I I'm happy to see that I'm 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 very happy to see that and I think that we we discussed this last week briefly uh, I think that it, it's good to see that now brands in any crossing every industry and category now are more conscious of that exactly I mean and that's what you know when you talk about like Virgil and what he was doing and also people like Armani and Ralph Lauren like. Ralph Lauren didn't launch the brand and have a home, you know, section. What, you know, they, they, they built that world and then they realized that everyone loved that world so much they wanted to be as, you know, submerged into it as possible. And then they created that. Like, I mean, th the best example is like your fireman jacket and, and race car culture within Jaya, right? Like you don't make a Faye jacket. I mean, the, the, that's Faye, right? But like, yes. that's, it's, but I've been begging you've... them, by the way. If you know, somebody's <laughs> list, I've been beg I've been bothering them. My wife is like, "You should stop." No, I'm like, "I'm gonna I'm just hearing as hard as I can." No, but keep going. So I didn't want to. <laughs> but wanna but like to... your love for that, it created a world in which actually I think has made your clothes more powerful. I, I, yes, and 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 talking about the empathy component, I, I I think that what when I when I realized that. I had to inject the brand with stuff that w were familiar to me. Mm -hmm. That's when we, that's when we actually, when I say turn, Jeremy means that's, that's when I was able to pay the rent, uh, uh, to, to, pay, <laughs> to pay the bill. Uh, be because what happened is that you grow up and, and I had those, those guys that would drive like a red uh, wagon polar and had like the beard and the super tenere bike all beat it up. And as a kid, I'm like, why you want to drive the bike? Why, why don't you just get like something? Other? But then you, you understand like the watch that was like faded and, and the, the, once like the, the, the jacket shoulder, like all consume and all. Also, I never considered that I would have walking client. And I am in Pasadena, which is a, great, oh, yeah, a wonderful That's place. very walking. So yeah, and go to explain to somebody like I say, yeah, this is a fake jacket. I say, huh, oh, it's a five fire jacket. Oh, I say, five fire jacket. And already when you made that comment, you can tell that you're losing the attention. Say, I don't want to look like a fire fire. So, no, but it's not that the con. Like, you wear these, and it, so it's like at the beginning, I was like explaining so much about having these jackets hanging here. Uh, and then I'm and now I'm just like, you know what? I don't, I don't mean to be like a dick. Sorry again for my French, but I'm like. You like it? Try on. Like, yes, it's a, it's a second hand, like it's a used garment. And that's why it's so special yeah. to me. Uh, but, but uh, you, you know, growing up uh, in Sicily, which uh, re actually California really, really reminds me of, of home uh, in a sense. The Targa Florio and I mentioned Enzo Mallorca before. Uh, he was a diver. And, and when I really, growing up, I, I, it, I, I was so fascinated by 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 you are not only um, so good at what you do and special because you do that, uh, but you dedicated your life to it. So if, if today mm -hmm. I, I got to humbly put together some pieces and, and giving the why to the people, why I do what I do, I look up, I look what I, how I've been spending the last years of my life and, and I'm like, I'm, I'm all in on this. I'm, I'm dedicating this completely i dedicated my life to this and 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 means that i left my 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 place i left my family it means i left people that i loved means i left without being too dramatic but but back to your no, point yeah. of how you the path that you that you've been that you've been uh, choosing is what will define who you are and and the garments you will like stuff you will wear and how you will act and i remember actually I remember the night, one, one of the first conversations I had with you, you asked me something, and we were at Antica Pesa, this beautiful restaurant in my old name, and you asked me something, and, and I told you about a Volvo commercial. And, and, <laughs> and I remember you, at the beginning, I remember looking at your face. I think when, when you are struggling learning a language, you develop naturally more of that intuition. Like, you almost like the facial expression and the body. I remember, oh, okay. I, I think I, I said that, and, and I could remember... Your first reaction was like, kind of, okay, let me see where you're going with this. And then I brought in <laughs> that I watched this commercial and, and this, with this, this, this uh, uh, underwater Swedish photographer, Eric, Eric Boyers, and that, that did the, 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 the last wag on the Volvo was launching it. And I told you exactly that commercial, like, this is how it was shot. And I'm looking at this guy, this fucking car is great. And the, your, the last sentence was like, so did you buy a Volvo? I said, yes. <laughs> I just leased that car like two weeks ago. 
but but like yeah the storytelling and and yes i think i think what i'm trying to say is that um we are so sensitive uh about what we deliver because we are so sensitive about what we are interested in it and and right. only if you do that you can you can go a little bit a little bit deeper and 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 you can express yourself a little bit better as a as a, whatever you choose to do you know and i think new consumers and like younger folks have a much higher bullshit tolerance and or, or like or radar or whatever because you know we'll go to a store and you'll see that the store might be all about i don't know uh swimming or something right and you're like these guys don't they're not they don't actually believe that so, you're like, so, so because of that you realize like all oh, this all this clothes this is all trash and you you write off the whole thing because the brand or the store is trying to pretend that they live in a world that they don't clearly want to be in and so you're just like, well, because of that, I don't think any of your stuff's good. And if, the, but if it was the other way around, and they were like, no, no, we are swim culture, and we, like, I'd be like, oh, we wow, really this is really cool. It. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, I mean, they it, really it, get it. <laughs> it, it. It's true, and, and and I always use this line, and 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 my wife, my wife sometimes hates me for that. Like, like I make sweaters in South of California, Jerry, and and it's like the, when I made <laughs> the last sweaters I made because I started with stuff that was I needed, I needed, of course, to to be in the market with with a product that would it be uh, like bread and butter, how we vulgarly use on on as a, as a, as a, as expression in the in our world, and and then I remember developing new product where it could be a little bit more. You know, you 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 gotta you gotta put you gotta have your driver items. You know, you, you for any crew neck cashmere in navy that you see on the counter, like you gotta sell lots of those to to have the, the yeah. sweater that drip on your job with like. Paddle neck in fe- in March, like at the eighty degree. <laughs> uh, when I started developing new product that were more based on what I really, really uh, found interesting and beautiful, I remember doing a first sweater. My, my, you know, working with Italian manufacturer is uh, is kind of hard. And 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 the guy with a comb is like David. And then the, the sweater is nine hundred grams. <laughs> How are you are gonna <laughs> sell like a sweater? Like who's wearing this? Only a maniac we, we, we wear something like this. I was like, okay, let's use something different, like different material. What, I, what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, it, it's it's a journey, and 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 the the only thing you can really do is just just doing it. And then then if you you know what I mean, I, I don't know if it is like then, then if you have if, if you have success, that's that's great. If if you if you sell, if you can be out there, it's great. But the only really way you have to do it is to, to make a sense and then just do it. Well, that being the case. How are those pants coming along then? <laughs> I have it upstairs. I just got the samples two weeks ago, and and there uh, we go. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's we we are we are now talking about California and talking about this 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 yeah. culture and how you dress out here. We are uh, we are we are working on a chino that will be combined with with this the, with this cotton blazer. Uh, mm. Not nothing, and uh, I'm not inventing the wheel, but we're like. Um, uh, using this this very nice ends of cotton that we used to do our working shirt, and we are gonna do that. We are we are now doing a proper proper shirt, and we are doing new sweaters. And I'm working on finally working on an outwear. Unfortunately, not with Faye, and it will uh, not it will not fine. have uh, it will not have the ganch. It will not have the looks the hooks because I respect uh, I respect the history of the garment, of course. Um, and we are also working on a shoe. So, so we are we are doing a uh, a shoe. Okay, yeah, that's a whole other world. Yeah, we are doing accessories. We are doing a desert boot. We are doing a sandal. And when I say we are doing, I, I finally got the, the 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 samples. And so I am um, now the store. We are uh, far enough that now we can do a buying for the store and do the buying for the store. So not only serving wholesale, but now we have. Uh, we have uh, we we can finally buy for the store, so it means that in March we we will have this uh, we will launch this product uh, directly first, and uh, of course with our partners also. That's huge! Congrats! That's so great! That's so great! You 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 you, you are a pen, like you are very, you you deserve a pair. You will get you will get a pair as soon as we have them. Like we will have, you you will have a pair for sure. But but uh, yeah, so I'm very excited. And the socks, and we are doing socks. We are doing. I'm 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 trying to 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 build that little by little, very very. Delicious. I mean, I I feel like that's that's where 
you know, brands like really, really launch, obviously, is like, even though you might start with a core product, like, you know, beautiful knitwear, the fact is just like what you were saying, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're putting together great looks and, and really great stories on all the images that you have, like now being able to be like, yeah, the pants are mine, buy them here, you know, correct. Correct. Like, you got it. it, it, <laughs> and it, it I stopped by getting mad and I'm like, okay, let me collect some, some data. Like they might trying to, to tell me something. And what's funny and fascinating, Jeremy, is like, you do something and, and what I said before is that the, the really fine line of like what I do, he has to make sense. So I was like, I remember standing doing colored sweater at the beginning and, and, and you know, you, you, you think about a sweater, it's like, okay, what color? Like everybody, you, you know how color cards look like, you know, how a buyer will buy. You're like, okay, let me do four colors. Sure. What color do you want? Like, let me do a navy. Let me do a, uh, um, let me do a gray. Let me do a white and let me do a yellow and a red. And people, you will walk to the restaurant with this yellow, like, turtleneck sweater. Look like a Swedish fisherman out of a boat. And, like, people are like, wow, this sweater is great. How much you like this sweater? It's like, I love this sweater. Would you buy this sweater? I don't know if I would buy it. It look great on you. Okay, I don't need it. Because then you sell navy, like, in four days. It's, out, it's sold yeah. out. And then I have this yellow sweater hanging on my shelf. Nobody cares about it. So it's like. Uh, I, I think that uh, it, 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 what it was our limit, um, it turned out to be a blessing for us. It means that having limited uh, resources make you very uh, agile. Very, it, it, it tried to make you more conscious of what you do. So it's like when I when I when I first met you, when I was launching the brand and and I was showing to people, I had this uh, very naive idea that that I will do like collection and. I will arrive at the point that I will have this showroom. You can go look. You know, I was coming from like from from the guy. So I was like, yeah, you would you you would be walking on a you know a Brunello showroom. You have like it's fifty manning and it's just like ten employees all around. You have twenty six like outdoor options. And so it's like I was like, okay, forget about that, David. Just let let's make it what what, what we got. So like, how do I move resources and and trying to be smart with that? So so I think that once. Same with the same with the visual component. Once I realized that we could do and being more efficient, um, because I'm one like uh, one of those guys that play the band on the in the square. I have the I have the, <laughs> the, the, the I have the guitar. I have here like I have a microphone. I have like the the I'm one like like uh, yeah. If you build it that way, you gotta be very very conscious of what you do. Like otherwise, you will have a lot of, lot of sleepless uh, sleepless nights. Yeah, when. When we, um, when I worked in, in retail and we were doing the buys for the store, we would always do things like, let's do like a purple crocodile shoe <laughs> and let's do like a, a crazy bright color of this. And, and you'd put it in the window, but we would only order like one or two. And then you'd be like, all right, now we're going to do like 30 times that in navy and gray. And that, and then we were like, oh, now we can pay our bills. And, and, and you know, now, now, now the, the money's coming in to do that. And that's fine. But it was funny because there were, but you need those things to bring people in the store. Because, like, if you had navy and gray in the window, sure, it would look good. But it's like you sometimes people want to see the possibilities of something, but they will never want to take that risk themselves. Yes, yeah. and 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 also, I gotta be honest. Like, he also makes sense. Like, like, like means that again. Like, how far can I go with a message I'm sending to you? Like, 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 how many of the I can build a collection. I can make clothes for. Uh, like the guy that is only for the guy that is right now, like uh, Gigi Soldano, photographer, and he's, he's photography, <laughs> yeah. but he's the car in, in, in Saudi Arabia. Like, so it's like you, I, you know, a lot, lots of time, Jeremy, I'm glad you did the previously in this, uh, the beginning of this, mentioning Ralph Lauren. And, 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 and it's so funny. Everybody in the industry kind of give it for granted. They kind of give it for mm -hmm. granted Ralph Lauren history and who Ralph, who, who Mr. Lauren represent. And, and what he's been doing, but it is very hard. Like for me to be able to match my message on what it could be a window walking on the street or a mm -hmm. magazine or a, or a shelf where you will finally, even an outlet shelf where you will go buy something. Um, so where you will decide to do the jump and, 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 and then to see how far you can, how cool you could be or how much, how close you could be to be that guy that, that Ralph wanted you to be. I think that that is extremely, extremely, extremely hard. I think that. Oh, yeah. I think that that is ultimately, because I saw so many brands that were, I mentioned it before when I mentioned 
National Street, which was a store that I loved. We saw historically lots of great brand with a great, great DNA, with a great image, with a know-how, and they just ended up to to die, sadly. So it's like, it's really like, how much, how much attention can I pay to that? How careful mm. do I need to be? How do, how, how do I need to think that, uh, uh, how do I keep the door open? You know, like, again, not to be too dramatic, but, but, but. There right. are an incredible amount of things that jump in your head daily that you're like, okay, like, like, how, 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 yeah, what do we need to do? Talking about social media and it's like, like if we said before, and you, you work in retail, you understand that. It's like, how cool can it be at the point that you are, I can't, I can't stand that guy. I'm never going to buy even like, <laughs> like a coffee cup from the guy. So it's like that one of my biggest concern at the beginning Still, these days, is that beside you liking me, beside you understanding what I what I like, or or this lifestyle or this aspirational thing, and the storytelling and all that, you gotta be able to just deliver something that. That's why, again, joking aside about the name, uh, you gotta be able to, to humbly deliver you something that you you can understand is 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 valid, is quality, and that is that everybody can use and. You know, I don't, again, I always repeat, uh, I don't know if it makes sense, but, but that's how I, that, that's, that's what I think is the only way you can, you can do anything. Right. No, I, I agree. I mean, and I think the good news is too, I think like customers are going to be more loyal to, I think, brands that run with convictions versus ones that like are constantly changing themselves to meet what they think the demand is. Absolutely. I totally yeah. agree with you. And, and, and again, What's what's interesting is that once you see big company, big brands making certain mistake, then you're yeah. like, damn, if they did that mistake, who am I? <laughs> Why do I think that I will not? You know, like, and I don't want to mention any brand because I don't want to. <laughs> when you talk good, you you can make the name, but when you when you're just you know, like, but but I think there are so many brands that during the years like have been losing a little bit their their identity oh, yeah. when they try to do to be something else, and and, and yeah. And, and once you, as soon as you started doing that, very dangerous spot to be. In. Oh, like, yeah. Um, well, we're, we're starting to wrap up. So a lot of these other questions are totally random. So please, please. you can answer or you cannot answer. Um, if you were making a YouTube how-to video, what would the subject be? Damn, I remember I talking about friends. I remember the first Michael Williams uh, uh, tutorial, how you wash like... Yeah. How you wash your jeans? You remember those Mister Porter like white panels where? Yeah, I I, lo- I used to love those. Um, a YouTube video, damn Jeremy, that's a hard answer to. That's an hard answer to give it to you. It, it it's kind of it's kind of. I think it, it, there is something that uh, this friend of mine that you probably know used to do. This this video that he did, that he created lately I've been very very stuck in this idea of the the the, the visual message like there is something that really stimulates me and if you remember the gesture video of the hands like how do you be italian like do you remember like uh yeah and this dear friend of mine his name is jacopo maria shinti which actually was former art director at uh, mr porter um and that video after so many years is still so funny so entertaining so not seriously t- 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 like it's it's just it's just so great to watch it. It's like it makes you put a smile on your face. But if I should yeah. do any sort of YouTube uh, content right now, it probably be based on that. Like how 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 can I just like I, I wish I could uh, I wish I could uh, I could bring like a camera in places where people like like you know the the, the factory and lunch break right and the guy smoking cigarettes. Like you mentioning like the the. The thing that I that I love, like the cars, and you know, you grew up in season. Mechanic that make cars is so far from what you think the the sexy image is. The Targa Florida, the guy has a cigarette, like putting a tube on the set on the tank to make the gas like the leak of the gas. Like, yeah, that's a good idea. Just put it in the tube, but like the gas that is more is gonna drip it down. Like, listen, the car in my spot. No, it doesn't spot the guy. knows how to drive. Like, like, like. I think uh, I think uh, it would be based on uh, the the fine line between being uh, doing things and trying to make it uh, look uh, look uh, proper. And yes, it would be very organic for sure. I don't know if you answered to your question, but that's what I would try to do. <laughs> uh, last movie you saw? 
I watched COVID uh, quarantine for two weeks recently, and I watch all mm. the classics. I don't want to give you those answers, like obvious answers. But I got to be honest, I watched Manhattan recently, and, and the beginning of Manhattan is uh, just those three first scenes are incredible. Um, Becoming Cousteau is a great movie, a uh, documentary that I watched that I really, really like. Uh, uh, something more funny, I watched this uh, Danish uh, movie called Another Round. It's all Danish Oh, great movie. Well. Fantastic movie about the yeah. teacher that just get drunk at uh, daylight. Um, and last night I watched, uh, if we want to use something more, uh, more, uh, more, 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 less sophisticated, I say I watch King Richard and I cry on the couch with my wife because uh, uh -huh. as, as, as corny and, uh, and, um, Cheesy they might be was uh yeah, we watched it the last night. Uh I cried at almost everything I watch. I cried <laughs> to my daughter's like kids TV show the other day. We were watching, I think, Daniel Tiger, and I started crying. <laughs> I don't know if that happened after after you have kids, but it's like I am exact I cry with a blow of a wind. I, I am very I'm an, I'm becoming Jeremy an easy cried. I'm glad that you say that, but now like I watch things and 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 I don't remember what I recently watched and I'm sobbing and 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 now I'm and I don't care any I don't even care where I am like I watch even recently we watched James Bond with my wife she fell as <laughs> she fell asleep in the last thirty minutes I am silently like this crying on my seat. <laughs> Two kids look at me next to me like, is this guy okay? Like, this is a grow-up man that's just crying watching James Bond dying. And, and so it's like, yes, I, I'm, I'm very sensitive lately. <laughs> I cry very, very easily. We were watching, I don't know what it was, but my, like, basically any time now, my wife will look over and she'll see, like, my nostrils flare or something. And she goes, uh, here it comes. <laughs> She's like, there's, there's the strills flaring. She's like, what do we got going on? And I was like, like, like just. Like your lips shaking, like why yeah, would it just be like it's insane? Yeah. I don't, I, but but you know what's funny too, and you're, I'm glad you are. I'm so glad that, you, that you're like. It's funny that it happened instantly. I can remember the day oh, after yeah. my daughter was born. Like I watch an incredible amount of, of movies, something that really, and I don't remember what I watch, but it was the week that she was born. She couldn't sleep, and I put her on this, and I put her on this. Uh, I put her on this. Oh, it was a short um, from Pixar called Bao. It's oh, a, oh, dude, of course. That that's a story about a, a kid finding his family. Oh, yeah, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not joking. I was devastated, and and <laughs> I was dev. I was devastated, and my wife. It, it, my wife is like me in that sense, but even her was like, "Honey, you okay?" Like she, I was devastated. So it's like, yes, yeah, to your point, like. Um, I try to watch movies that don't necessarily make me, make me cry. Like like recently, yeah. <laughs> but I watch a lot. A lot. Of, I watch. I watch a lot of a lot of movies during the week. It's it's a good way for me to be inspiration. I, I recently watch. Uh, I mean, I watch Taxi Driver, incredible movie, oh, and I watch okay. um, All the Men's President recently. Yeah, and I don't know. Now we are Robert Redford, are, Dustin Hoffman, yes, Dustin yeah, Hoffman. Yeah. And the two of them, without using anybody obvious, uh, of course, I gotta need to 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 drive you through those emotions that I went through. But now that I'm getting a little bit, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, 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 now that I also understand the language and I can watch movie in original languages, right? Mind, like it, it, it's it's something, you know. Like I had to rewatch basically all the De Niro movie to just. I'm like, holy, now I understand the nuances of an accent or, or what they deliver. Because till very, very recently, I was watching a movie with the Italian language on it with, with actors that were. Oh. No, yeah, so, I know what you mean. So now I watch this movie. We watch like, subtitle, holy. we watch movies with English subtitles in English almost all the time. When, when um, you want to really, you know, understand yeah. the, what, what I watched recently, there is an incredible, I think, movie, and I'm proud that. Is an Italian, uh, the hand of God. Oh my God! If yeah, you of course. Did, no, you did watch. Incredible, yeah. incredible. I mean, I'm a huge uh, Diego. I mean, I play I play soccer growing up. Uh, so Diego Maradona for me is like uh, if God was uh, was uh, two was Rolexes, coach, one on each wrist, always or two <laughs> Richard Mille, whatever it was. It's so funny you say that, but I, I would say that in uh, in uh, off uh, offline. But but somebody that does uh, watches. Uh, yeah, I will tell you this later. 
but sure, yeah sure. so it's like the watch the watch is uh the the, the movie is uh the movie is incredible and it's yeah. very uh you know like it's an incredible movie I, i thought it was a very very good movie um what's the last thing you bought online <laughs> i'm an ebay i'm a, i have some issue especially later at night i am i am a oh, compulsive same, same. I'm laying in bed. It's like 1 a.m. and my wife's asleep and she wakes up and there's like a glow of a screen. She's like, what are you doing on eBay? And I'm like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes so deep because eBay allows you to really like maniacally like going to the deepest deep. I, the last thing I bought and I have a crazy story for you uh, quickly. I lost a pair of glasses, sunglasses that has been my sunglasses for the last, uh, I'm not being, probably five or six years. Wow. Which sunglasses are one of the, you wear glasses. So you understand how hard it is to keep something like not losing it, not breaking it. And I had this pair of glasses that I bought. It uh, is a Wimbledon edition, a pair of uh, rough one, a pair of sunglasses. And Jeremy, I went on a, on a lunch with some friends on Saturday and I hate to lose my thing. And I lost these glasses. Two days, watch under couches, watch like. Oh Yeah cars i call friends check in your car i went to the restaurant twice to ask them if they found the glass Crazy. my i was moody old monday you couldn't talk to me my wife is like are you not a little bit like pair of sunglasses are you okay but they were <laughs> so at this point they were so special and used and i spent i believe and now that you have a daughter you understand the value of time i think i spent two or three hours on ebay try to look after i called the store in aspen or brothel and store in new york After I called an outlet in, in, in uh, Camarillo, I asked the guy, like I was giving him the code of the, I finally found them at page like 76 hey. and I just click anyone. And that's the last purchase I did. It was, it was, uh, yeah. What day is today? It's, uh, yeah. It was Wednesday. That's right. There you go. You are now made whole again. The glasses I are coming I can't wait back. for them to, come, I can't wait for them to arrive. That's funny. Um, what is a movie or a book? That when someone mentions, you feel that they understand you. Book, and I'm reading now um, to my daughter, is Il Piccolo Principe, The Little Prince. Ah. Uh, I don't know why I mentioned it. As soon as you said book is the last thing. Like, and last night, I'm reading to her. My daughter is seven months old, so she is not the advanced. But I'm reading the book and I'm starting really, really feel, um, I don't know, it, it was incredible. I, I said to my wife, I felt, I felt like a kid. And for me, the feeling of feeling like a kid is probably the most genuine feeling that we are able to, to, to emotionally try. So she was in the room and I'm reading the book to Carmela and I don't know, rereading the book. Um, <laughs> I know you might were looking for some different answer, but reading the no, book. No, that's was, great. And then I, and then I'm reading the, the Colorado kid, Stephen King, Stephen King. Oh. I just got that. Uh, I just get, I just got that. We have here in Pasadena, a great store called, uh, Vromans, um, which, uh, almost bankrupt, uh, before mm. COVID, they almost closed. And then the city re, re the city saved it. And I'm pretty sensitive about bookstores. Uh, you remember when they put it down Rizzoli on yeah. Midtown and it was next to my office it was where yeah. I met actually Massimo the first time, uh, 57 and fifth where then building number nine was our office were there. And I remember going to Ritz Solieri almost every night after work. It, it gave me the sense of peace and, and it was so quiet and it was so beautiful. And, and, and I was one of those crazy people that the day that they put it down, went there like at 5 a.m. and saw like the, the donation and saw the, the empty spot. But we have a, a store, a bookstore in Pasadena that is as special as that. And, and I found oh, the whole other kid. I found this Stephen King movie, uh, Stephen King books, a book that I, that I, that I would go read. A friend of mine, she worked for Rizzoli and I was working in the music business and, um, I would send her vinyl records and she would send me books and trade. And it was like the best That's a good, deal. That is a good ever. deal. <laughs> That is a very, yeah, I was like, I got you on records. Deal. Yeah, there is a very, all very those good books. Deal. Yeah, I I started yeah. going through Just, these these two boxes of records last week, uh, in my house in my garage, and my father in law was this, this this legend that I this guy that I love so much, and and I don't know, but going through through those vinyls, like you mentioned vinyls, like it's so good. It's 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 just they all like 
it's incredible. It's it, and I and again, I it, it's so funny. We grow up, and you always have the guy that tells you things like that. And you're not young, and you're like, okay, sure, like, yeah, sure, yeah, like, sure, of course, like you found this edition of like. But now I'm really like digging on that. But that's a good good friend to have. That, that is a good trait. That, that is for sure like a good trait. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I'll still on occasion try to go and listen to a record like all the way through like like sit down don't have your phone out don't have anything just sit and listen to a record from start to finish it's surprisingly hard because my mind always wants to do something else but i always am glad after i did it like i listened to bob dylan's new morning all the way through and it was i was like god this is so good you know what's funny like like once you starting to list if you find that record they really catch your attention. Like, I remember first time uh, my roommate in New York was, uh, he's, a, he's a DJ, he was a professional DJ. And one night he brought home um, Blueprint from Jay-Z. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is not necessarily a record that you would play. You know, you think about record to play, Bob Dylan, like Bruce Springsteen, like, like Frank Sinatra, like I found this all. But he brought that, that, uh, <laughs> He brought that album, and as soon as he put it in, I put it on, and I hear like, and and the voice, I'm like, holy, like it blew my mind away. So it's like it's good to find those. Uh, I think it's great to find those those vinyl that just like keep you on the chair, and you're just there, like saying, okay, I am listening to this. It's just too good. Too good. Do you ever uh, listen to like any Italian music? Because like for me, I still will put on like Paolo Conte and like lose my shit. You just mentioned like the guy, yeah, un gelato al limone, un gelato. What a guy! I listen yeah. to Paolo Conte very often. I listen to uh, Francesco De Gregori. Actually, talking about baby and dad, and to be that guy, if you put Francesco De Gregori. To your and, and you listen to your to 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 your baby, what he sings is almost a, a Nina Nan all the time. The guy had this voice and uh -huh. Francesco De Gregorio, Donna Cannone, like Buonanotte, Buonanotte, amore mia. Uh, Luigi Tenco, Lucio Battisti, which is an artist that I loved, and yeah. only recently the family allowed uh, um, any platform of music to distribute their. Uh, is is uh, history Lucio Dal? Uh, you know, my mother was born in 1945, and and my father was born in 1950. So all all I listened oh, wow. was was a good time. After that, clearly, like the the 70s, the 80s, the 90s is where Italy really had. Um, and I forced the entire family to watch uh, I Tre Tenori to watch the Three Tenor on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on the 25th, and my wife is like after 20 minutes in. My wife is like, okay, can we just watch something? If and I forced them to watch that for like an hour and a half, like Pavarotti <laughs> and Domingo and Carrera. I don't know, I don't know, Jeremy. I'm very like uh, I think that music in general, musicians, um, were the highest expression, the the highest form of art, at least the one that uh, that is more uh, the we the, the we can the we can appreciate and understand, and you know sounds. Like taste, uh, I think really, uh, it, it, it's really something that mentally can bring you. Like I lost my mother a few years ago, and <clears throat> Italian Italian music some somehow but she she would have put the music on in, during the day to clean in the house. I don't know. She was my my music. Uh, yeah, so, mm -hmm. so Italian music somehow really really reminds me of my mother. But it's always beautiful. Pino Daniele. Uh, oh yeah. Renato Zero, Antonello Venditti, oh, Jeremy, we, we, we will need another, we will need another episode. I'm a big, big, so here at the store, I always, uh, I'm lucky enough to be here at the store every day, all day, and, that I, and I can just, with that excuse, I can, uh, I can listen to great things. Well, a, a buddy of mine who works, um, he's a professor, and he was telling me that, like, music and cooking are, like, one of the two art forms in which you actually you as a as a patron of the artist right or like you get to experience it as it's happening as the art's being made right like say like a painter you don't you never get to view the art the way that the artist is viewing it because 
they start it and then they finish it and then it is done. Like they're just, not actually you see it done. That's a fantastic yeah. point. I never thought and, about that. Yeah. And so he's I'm like, with you food, do. you have the preparation, the, the, it actually being made and then the enjoyment of it, like the, the experience of it afterwards. And with music, it's the same thing in which you're hearing them make it right in front of you and, never and then you can it. do it again. Yeah, I know. I it's, it's crazy. It. Uh, yeah, me either. But it's, about it. it's cool. You, brought, you just blew my mind. But it's, you know what I was talking about art, what I, what I watched recently that, that, he, that you made me think about it. Uh, I watched this great documentary about the male Gioconda. I don't know if you mm. watch it. It's incredible. Uh, these three guys from New York uh, found that um, it's basically these, these, for years, it's been debating to be original or not. It was this, this Christ, this Jesus that Leonardo Painted, vulgarly rebaptized uh, the male Gioconda, and um, and they bought it for like a thousand dollars. And oh the, yeah, the, I know what you're talking about. And, and yeah. the art got sold for like three hundred, like four hundred million dollars from this Saudi. Uh, and and after all, I believe after the Salvatore years, Mundi, yeah, after, correct. And after fifteen years, I think got legitimized. Watch that was incredible. Watch it because it doesn't look. It looks a little bit corny, but watching it, it blew my mind away. And then I watched the the scandal of the art gallery that with with the with the fake. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, she the, would the say fake like fake. Uh, and the, yeah, that it, she hired the, the 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 teacher that was able to paint the making replica of art. And no, it, it's it's something that. Uh, but I never thought it. Yeah. Yeah, I Anne Friedman. Anne, that that was the woman. Yeah. Bravo, bravo, correct. <laughs> uh, but what's funny is that yeah, I I know how to cook, but. I, I can I I can't even play a a I can I I I don't have the sense of playing music. I don't have completely the sense. When I was younger, I couldn't even play the the flout. I'm a I was a disaster, a schoolmate. No, I wish I knew how to play something. I wish I knew how to play piano. You know, like 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 yeah, I found it magical. Every time I go to, I went with my wife recently to to watch the the. LA as a great uh, philharmonica orchestra. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and we went to watch uh, um, the LA orchestra with Residente. Mm. Um, she's an artist that I would never think could 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 really touch us that much, but but it blew our mind away. It was a fantastic uh, and the whole preparation. I don't know. There is the ritual of a musician is something that that I find extremely fascinating. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Davide, this has been huge huge thank you so much for your time jeremy thank you jeremy thank you this is, this is great thank you i really appreciate uh, it all right thanks it was great to have you ciao jeremy thank you thank you thank you bye thanks so much for listening our show is produced by blamo media or edited by amar law our theme music by the mysterious breakmaster cylinder if you like what you heard, you know the drill. Share the pod with a friend. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Do whatever that stuff you do when you like a show. Follow us on Instagram for all the hot content. And if you want to talk to us and give us your hot take, we'd love to hear from you. Our phone number is in the show notes. Leave us a message and we'll put it in a future episode. Or email us at info at blamopod.com. If you want to hang with us and join the Blam Fam, visit patreon.com forward slash blamo, where we have tons of exclusive episodes in our amazing Slack community. That's it for me. A couple episodes left. See you soon.